for all the talk of we've got Brexit done, and Brexit has been a done, or meant to be a done and finished deal, it is far from being a done deal. We said right back at the start of this, this was but the beginning of the beginning of Brexit. And, you know, it has proved so far we've had two proper years so um sorry, one proper year so far of Brexit, and it didn't go well. And 2022 is not looking to be as good either. And remember, Brexit was always driven by essentially free market fundamentalists like Jacob Rees-Mogg and all the rest of the Brexiteers, Liam Fox, who are desperate, desperate to throw out any and all regulation they can because they believe that a government should not be involved in regulating the market in any way, shape or form and are desperate to try and throw out as many of the European uh, laws as they possibly can. But time and time again, when we look at public perception of, of regulation, overwhelmingly, the public wants good regulations. They are not against regulations because the Eurosceptics did an incredibly good job of saying, we don't like that particular regulation, not because it's a bad regulation, because it was a EU regulation. So actually, any, shall we say, opposition government to this whole idea of Singapore and the Thames as they want to create, Labour would do an incredibly good job campaigning back against that, because we know people in the UK want good regulations. And it's very easy to make the case for many of these regulations now, because they are indeed very good. But of course, Brexit is not working. And it's not working to the extent that many of the Brexiteers in 2016 promised it would. Hence why just this last month, we have seen so much panic from them in the case of, oh my God, Brexit's not working. We haven't got um, Brexit done yet. And of course, as we've said before, Brexit is never enough for the Brexiteers. It doesn't matter that we have gone incredibly hard on, on Brexit, from considering where the Leave stance originally was of we will leave the European Union politically and remain in the single market customs union back in 2016 at the referendum to where we are now. Uh, it, it's gone quite a long way. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to go diving into this article to find out what's been going on in the Brexit camp, because all has not been going well for them very recently. But before we do that, uh, please do remember to hit that like, share and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and a one off donation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can, well, buy me coffee. And as always, thank you very much to all those people who do support the channel that way. So whoop, on the go with this article. So this comes from The Guardian with the title of Why the Panic Among Boris Johnson's Allies? Because they know Brexit is unravelling. Did something change this month? Having proclaimed that the Brexit referendum of the triumph of 2016 as a unique achievement of Boris Johnson and praised his historic success in the elections three years later with the slogan of get Brexit done, did the wreckers of the European dream slowly began to realize that if Johnson goes, it shifts the sands from beneath their feet? I'm the president of the European movement and Andrew Adonis is chair. And between us, we've agreed that this link needed a public airing. Learning the direct and simple messaging of the anti-European newspapers, we felt the phrase, if Boris goes, Brexit goes, is simple and clear enough. Adonis has duly tweeted it to the horror of the very pro-Brexit press. And the past few weeks have been a very torrid time for the Prime Minister. His, his, his design is to set off a uh, design to set of restrictions, he said, that were critical of importance for our safety and the ability to help the NHS cope with the pandemic. He was right to do so. But the discourse since then has given it a very clear impression that he not only broke the rules, but he also misled Parliament. Johnson has said that he would accept the findings of the Sue Gray inquiry in very stark contrast to his treatment of Sir Alex Allen's report into his very home secretary's behaviour back in 2020. I believe that he is entitled to a insist that matters are not prejudiced prior to the release of the full findings of the Gray inquiry and the completion of the Metropolitan Police investigation. I do believe in the rule. Uh, I, I do not believe in the rule of the mob, but. A great deal now hangs on this. 
if the Prime Minister is found to have lied to Parliament and the people, what defence is there to the allegation that the Brexit cause, myriad in so many similar controversies over the lies and dismembling, was conducted with the same disregard for the truth? We all have a very clear memory of the Brexit campaign and what it said. The, uh, and that uh, we were beginning uh, to run, be, begin to be run by Brussels and that the European restrictions were holding back our economy and lowering our living standards, that we could keep all the benefits of the single market and customs union while negotiating trade deals with fast growing countries in the world uh, were, uh, was, was shifting east and that we had to regain control of our borders and that there would be no new border between Northern Ireland and the mainland Great Britain and the Good Friday Agreement, having uh, having ended years of strife, would be fully honoured. Theresa May obviously became Prime Minister and immediately handed an important officers of state to three leading Brexiteers. Boris Johnson went into the Foreign Office, David Davis went into the Department for Exiting the European Union, and of course Liam Fox into the Department of International Trade. They had their hands on the very levels of powers for two years before Johnson and Davis then resigned, claiming that their jobs were just impossible. Having ousted May, they then claimed that a bare-bones uh, Brexit trade deal, without the most of the benefits of the customs union and even the single market, was the oven ready and would get Brexit done. And in a straight contest with the unelectable Jeremy Corbyn, Johnson secured his mandate. Except their deal didn't get Brexit done. Within months, it had seriously fractured the trade between Northern Ireland and Great Britain. And of course, the government even threatened to tear up the very deal itself that it had negotiated to safeguard the position of Northern Ireland. Lord Frost then resigned from the cabinet as Brexit minister last December, after less than a year complaining that the COVID strategy, complaining about the COVID strategy, but also bemoaning that regarding Brexit, the correct agenda had not been pursued. Characteristically, of course, he gave no details as to what that agenda should have been, or who was holding it up. But the villains were very familiar. The Metropolitan Elite, the Civil Service, the BBC, Brussels, the Ramonas, more or less anybody, and now including myself and even Andrew Adonis, except the actual people in the very positions of power. That is why in February of 2020, it feels very significant. The cry has been growing louder. The right wing has been circling. Letters have been landing on the chairman of the 1922 committee's desk. Something must be done. Reshuffle the peak, reshuffle the pack, and create a new government department for yet another Brexiteer in charge to try and pluck those very low-hanging plums and prove that beyond the reach of our predecessors. Anyone with the experience of Whitehall knows what happens next. The nameplates will be changed, the civil servants will have new titles without any actual moving officers, but the face will remain exactly uh, all the questions that have now been unanswered for the past five years. What is Brexit all about? And of course, Jacob Rees-Mogg, Lord Frost's spiritual successor in his new role as Minister for Brexit Opportunities, has a very novel approach. He told The Sun last week that he is bypassing the civil service to ask if anyone else in the country has any ideas about Brexit benefits. And Sun readers were invited to write to him with suggestions and that what can see what can be done. But that too is very revealing. One of the first uh, field tests officials apply to new ministers is to ask them what they know about what they want and to assess what they have the ability to communicate uh, that to them. And I'm afraid that Rees Mogg has not passed that test, which is all the more surprising as he had plenty of time lounging around on the government front bench listening to suggestions from his own Brexit supporting Tory MPs. So did something happen in February of 2020? Maybe it's just a feeling, a cloud no bigger than a man's fist. But the fist breached the wind before the storm when the Daily Mail and the Daily Telegraph employed two of their most renowned columnists to attack Andrew Adonis and myself merely for making the point that their hero may have a feet of clay and take the whole Brexit house down with him. Perhaps they indeed smelled the wind just as I have. Um, and again, obviously, that's written by Michael uh, Heseltine uh, in, in The Guardian. But needless to say, um, he's right. This this month alone, we have seen constant panic, constant panic, um, not only from leading Brexiteers like uh, Liam Fox, um, David Davis, um, again, even um, Steve Baker, uh, sorry, Steve, uh, um, again, the, the former leader of the ERG, 
all saying this isn't what um, Brexit will be doing. We should be pushing far, farther and faster on all these, uh, you know, things, getting all this wonderful stuff done while we can, while we've got this big majority able to do it. Because when we actually start to tell people what we've done, maybe they won't be liking it that much or what we want to do. And as a lot of people have even suggested, if Boris does go, then even might be a general election. As I've said before, again, I'm a member of the uh, Labour Party. I've had a, a letter very recently asking me to contribute to Labour Party uh, general election campaign fund. Bit odd considering that there's meant to be a general election in, what, 2024, 2025? Bit odd that you're asking for donations now in 2022. Hmm. But needless to say, um, it is very, very true. I think if Boris goes, there's a very good chance that the whole Brexit falls with him because, let's face it, Boris is indeed the only one and indeed the face of Brexit itself. And if he goes, well, then people might start asking questions. What was Brexit really all about? And to be honest, a lot of the people who voted leave aren't going to like those answers because, as we've said before, you talk to many of the people who did vote leave and the distance between the Brexiteers like Nigel Farage, um, Again, Boris Johnson, uh, Steve Barker, um, Liam Fox, David Davis, all those hardcore Brexiteers is vastly different from the people who originally voted Leave and what they voted for. They're worlds apart. And sooner or later, that coalition is going to break apart. And when that does, so does the Tory party's massive majority. So... With that said, uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and a one link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can, well, buy me coffee. And as always, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you all next time.